everybody, welcome to Stunk's Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at Spectrum in this deep dive episode. Let's go! Right, so here we are back in the Ableton manual. Let's jump straight into it. Spectrum. Note the Spectrum device is not available in the intro and light editions. So if you're looking for a Spectrum analyzer and you're in intro or light, I could highly recommend Voxengo Span. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Completely free, brilliant Spectrum analyzer. Enough about that though, let's jump into Ableton's Spectrum. Spectrum performs real-time frequency analysis of incoming audio signals. The results are represented in a graph, with decibels along the vertical axis and frequency pitch along the horizontal axis. The peak levels are retained on the graph until the song is restarted. Note that Spectrum is not an audio effect, but rather a measurement tool. It does not alter the incoming signal in any way. The block chooser selects the number of samples that will be analysed in each measurement. High values result in better accuracy but at the expense of increased CPU load. Channel determines which channel is analysed, left, right or both. The refresh slider determines how often Spectrum should perform an analysis. As with the block parameter, this allows for a trade-off between accuracy and CPU load. A fast response time is more accurate, but also more CPU intensive. The average slider allows you to specify how many blocks of samples will be averaged for each update of the display. With a setting of one, each block is shown. This results in much more activity in the display, which can be useful for finding the spectrum of short peaks. As you increase the average value, the display updates more smoothly, providing an average of the spectrum over time. This is more consistent with the way we actually hear. The graph button switches between displaying the spectrum in a single interpolated line and discrete frequency bins. Max toggles the display of the accumulated maximum amplitude. With Max enabled, you can reset the maximum amplitude by clicking in the display. The scale X button allows you to toggle the scaling of the frequency display between linear, logarithmic and semitone. Note that logarithmic and semitone are actually the same scaling but switch the legending at the top of the display between hertz and note names. Linear scaling is particularly useful for detailed analysis of high frequencies. As you move your mouse over Spectrum's display, a box appears that shows the amplitude, frequency and note names at the pointer's position. The range auto button at the top left of Spectrum's interface toggles between manually and automatically adjusting the display's dynamic range. With range selected, you can zoom and scroll the amplitude by moving your mouse over the amplitude legending on the display left hand side. Drag vertically to scroll and horizontally to zoom. You can also use the range sliders to set the minimum and maximum amplitude values shown. With auto selected, the display automatically scales itself based on the incoming audio level. Note that in auto mode, the range sliders and zooming are disabled. To get an even better view, you can toggle the location of the display between Live's device chain and Live's main window by clicking the arrow button in Spectrum's title bar and or by double clicking in the display. Right, so that's the Spectrum. Let's jump into Ableton and have a little look. Right, so here we are back in Ableton. As always, I've got my operator just with one big sine wave. There we go. And this time, instead of grabbing span, we're going to grab Spectrum. So straight away, this little XY here is where our signal's going to appear. But for me, that's far too small to be useful. So I'm going to click this arrow just to give us more space up here. We can also close this window to give us even more space. So at the moment, we are auto. So what this does when we play, we can see all of this settling down here. Now this looks like there's a lot going on, but that is all the way at minus 60 decibels. So you can't hear it, although technically it is there. So if I grab span, let me copy and paste and look at this. The way I have span set up is you can only see what is important to us, not all that stuff down there. So we can do the same here by turning our range on. So do we need everything that's down at 160? Not really. How have I set it up on span? We've got it from minus 78 up to minus 18. So let's go minus 78. And then let's have that up more so we can just see a bit more. Uh, let's go plus 10. So we've got up to, you can see six above there. Here's our zero mark. And it gives you the initial 
kind of weird waves here. So even though this is a sine wave, it is being created and it has all those other things. So this block time can really help out with, see how much less information was there. And if you put that block time right up, see all that extra information that we are gathering. And again, if you look at span, you do have in here our block size, which I usually set at 4096. Um, that's just a good trade-off between being able to be useful but not too CPU intensive. So we set spectrum to the same. There we go. And then we have our refresh time. Again, you can set basically according to how deep you want to be looking into things. So with our spectrum, we're going to do the same thing we normally do. Let's grab an amp and put a bit of distortion on here. So maybe you might want that to go to minus 80. We'll see a bit more of what's going on down here. So you can see it's totally functional and it works. The main reason I like span is I like having it open <laughs> on top of my things so I can do stuff whilst having it there and be clicking on other things. I also like how span has this correlation meter which the Spectrum doesn't have. But for the purposes of what it is, a Spectrum Analyzer, it totally works. So we can go here, we can look, hover over, see C-sharp 1, see here our G2. So the only other problem that um, I think Span does better is being able to freeze. So I can have something like this, I can press hold, and then I can really have a look and see what I've got and what I need to fix, which for me I find really helpful for making kick drums and stuff like that where I might be looking for frequencies rather than just using my ears. I know everyone says use your ears, but we have eyes too, so I like to use them. But if we just grab a few more things, we can uh, make a big nasty sound as always. Let's do a bit of this, bit of that, bit of this, bit of that. Auto filter, notch, bam, boom, OSR, bit of drive, max for live, LFO, bam, bam, bit of movement. And you can see that here in the spectrum. So that's pretty much what what I'd be using Spectrum for, the same way you've seen me using Span all these times. It really is just a case of what you're looking for and um, what you find nicer and easier to use. As I said before, anything that I use that's third party, it's usually not something Ableton can't do, it's just something I prefer the GUI over. So that's why you've seen me using Span and not Spectrum in all of these episodes. As you can see here, it works exactly how you'd expect it to. We can set our different modes. If you're looking at notes, this is quite a good one to check. Um, but that's pretty much it. A lot, I know a lot of people use it to help them kind of with their mixes and stuff like that. And again, that's exactly what I use Span for. So if we're coming into a mix, I had some drums and I had some bass and I wanted to check everything was nice and my whole mix was sitting in a decent kind of space I'd put your spectrum onto your master channel now I've got I've got my span on my master channel but if you prefer to use spectrum get your blocks set it however you want 4096 will do set your uh, upper and lower limits however you see fit and um, yeah pretty much great tool to use just to help you out so you can visually see what's going on amongst your entire mix. Now like I said a lot of people say use your ears and not your eyes but it's really good sometimes just to be able to see when something's going wrong. So if we were to grab this bass again that all looks good but let's imagine we've done something wrong somewhere along the lines we've been boosting stuff and we end up with So 
imagine that we hadn't done that with an EQ. And you're like, oh, there's a really weird, weird plonky noise. So there's two ways I'd try and fix that. One of them would be grabbing an EQ in. And if we weren't using Spectrum, I would have headphone mode and I'd just be. Sounds like it's about there. So then we can dip the cue. But with Spectrum, we don't really have to worry about that at all. We can straight up see where that problem is. Oh look, that's here, that's this frequency. Where's that? 561 hertz. And we could come in and go 561 and fix that problem. point is just to be able to chase out these frequencies using a spectrum analyzer can really help where otherwise you'd be scooping around on your EQ trying to find a problem you can actually just physically look at the problem see the see the frequency that's higher than it should be and fix it simple as that all right, everyone, that'll do it for this episode of Deep Dive. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about Spectrum. Basically, it's just really nice to be able to use your eyes as well as your ears and get the best mix you can. I would definitely recommend bringing in some tracks of your favourite artists, having a look in Spectrum and seeing where their high levels are, where their low levels are, and then trying to replicate that on your own songs. And just listen to mixes you like and see what they look like. Take some print screens, have a folder of what a good mix sounds like, and then when you're struggling with your mixes, you've got some reference material to look at. So, as always, project files are available down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these deep dive sessions, and I'll catch up with you guys next time. Keep making music!